everyone, welcome in to another FIFA 23 Tactics video here on the channel. I'm Ash, as always, and today we're going to go through Louis van Gaal's Netherlands tactics, the tactics of his World Cup reign in 2022 in Qatar. Today, what I'm going to show you, for those of you who are new to the channel, first of all, welcome along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. What I'll do here is I'll show you the formation and any position changes. I'll also talk about the tactics, what they do and why they do it. And then we'll also go through all the player instructions as well. Thank you for joining me yet again. If, before we get into it, you want to see how this tactic ranks compared to all the other systems that I've covered on the channel so far, then check out my Patreon. On there, you can get access to my FIFA 23 tactics package with ratings, rankings, strengths, weaknesses, and suitable teams to players for every tactic that we cover on the channel. You can see how it compares to all of the other international systems that we have covered so far, as well as a whole host of other perks, exclusive tactics videos just for Patreon, behind-the-scenes videos, Discord server access, fantasy football access, and a whole lot more as well. And I just want to take this moment to say thank you to everyone on Patreon who has shown and support me. We've got, uh, what is it, I think it's 135 patrons at the moment, which is absolutely staggering for me. It is paying my bills. To be honest, you know, YouTube doesn't give you a pot to piss in, really. Excuse my language. Uh, so Patreon is what's supporting this channel and, and enabling me to put as much time into it as I can. So thank you to everyone who has really kindly um, you know, opted to support me on Patreon. Really appreciate it. With that being said, finally, let's talk about the system. So the system itself, it is a 5-3-2, um, which is what I've kind of found. However, when you want to set the formation, you don't want to go for the 5-3-2. You want to go, if we find it here, for the 3-5-2. And the reason being is that if you choose where we have it, the 5-3-2, We've got the holding one here. Um, obviously, you've only got one DM. And then with the 5-2-1-2, you can't move those central midfielders into defensive midfield without haggling around. So with the 3-5-2, you want the two defensive midfielders, which is why we've opted for this. The reason why you want them to be DMs instead of central midfielders is because, one, they're going to do more defensively. They're going to get closer to the centre-backs. There's going to be less space between them. Also, we can set instructions that we can't set as central midfielders as well and we don't want them contributing too much to the attacking phase of play. What you then want to do is, as you'll see here, we've got a right and left midfielder. You want to move these guys back so that they are now left wing back and right wing back. In this case, it is Daily Blind and Denzel Dumfries. So make sure you've got all of that done. With regard to the DMs, uh, you don't want to change it to left and right defensive field. Just leave them as they are. I believe they will both be CDMs in this case and that does get them closer together which is what you are looking for so let's talk about the tactics defensive style we've got press after possession loss some might be surprised that it doesn't perhaps complement the other areas of their play for example they're relatively deep their block is they've obviously got five defenders two defensive midfielders on the pitch but they will counter press and that's part of van Hal's philosophy and something he's done throughout his entire career all of his sides have always looked to counter press whenever they lose possession to try and regain possession back quickly they still do know the value of uh, kind of having the ball and, and controlling that tempo of the game. So defensive style is pressed after possession loss. The width is on 28, giving you a narrow system. I wanted this as close to 30 as we could get. The reason why it's not 29 is just about my OCD. But it doesn't make a difference anyway, basically. Whether it's 28 or 29, that only won't make a difference. The only differences you'll see are between 10, 20, 30. But the difference here is that once you get to 30, as you'll see here, it changes to balance. So you want this to be narrow. So we've gone with 28, as close as we can get it, to 30. A narrow shape, but because they've got kind of five defenders and then the three midfielders, um, you know, you won't be too narrow in terms of not being able to get players out wide, particularly with wing backs. Depth is on 40, giving you a mid block, a lower mid block, but it is still a mid block. For build up play, we have slow build up, again, playing into what I just spoke about with regards to them valuing possession. The defenders will drop back into the box on goalkeeper restarts, they'll show for the ball and they'll look to play through the thirds that way. Chance creation, again, possession. It's quite a slow build up generally, what they will do. They don't look to kind of charge at players with quick transitions. They look to try and build through the thirds and go that way. The runs then come when they're in the kind of attacking third of the pitch. So we have that on possession. Then the width is on 60. And this is going to be a relatively mid uh, kind of shape with regards to how stretched it is. What you're looking for here is there not to be too much space between the two central midfielders, which is why we don't have this on 17 above, 
up to 100 um, but then we also don't want it too narrow because you're going to find that the shape is far too compact um, and you will still notice them kind of you know looking to, to have patterns of play in the wide areas uh, players in the boxes on six giving you three players in the box it is going to be the two strikers and generally also the attacking midfielder as well occasionally denzel dumfries does go into the box but that's not so much from the system in my opinion that's more from uh, his personal preferences we see doing him doing it for inter milan quite a lot um, and that's really how he scored most of his goals um so generally we're going to keep this on three Finally, with the set pieces, both of these are on four, as is the case throughout the majority of the uh, videos. We keep these as a standard kind of baseline, really. With the player instructions then, starting off in goal, we have him on comms for crosses. And it's something I emphasise in pretty much all of my tactics videos, if and when we can. We want them taking kind of seizing the initiative i guess in those crossing situations just relieving some pressure off you uh, but then he's saving outside the box is balanced because of the fact that they don't play a very high line they don't really need the keeper coming out too far um and it's not something i really notice him do that much either the three center backs are absolutely fine you don't need to change anything there. With the two fullbacks then, wingbacks, whatever you prefer, starts off with Denzel Dumfries. We've got him on join the attack and we've also got him on overlap as well. That's that's pretty obvious really. I don't need to go through that. However, with Daily Blin, there are a couple of changes, or one change actually. His run type is still overlap. He will generally create the width, but his attacking runs are only unbalanced. He's not going to get forward all the time, as he doesn't. He does get forward often to be fair, but not relentlessly, not like Dumfries does. Sometimes he's kind of holding the fort a bit more, um, and how they compensate for this is often the likes of Depay and whoever the attacking midfielder was, whether that be Berghaus or, or Klassen, etc., would drift out wide into those wide areas, and Blind would just hold his position a little bit deeper and look to fill in for them. With the two defensive midfielders, starting off with Daron in this case, uh, he's more of that kind of ball-winning midfielder. And this is how we're going to replicate that. We've got him on cut passing lanes for his defensive behaviour. And we've also got him on stay back while attacking as well. The way we recreate that kind of defensive-minded uh, player is aggressive interceptions. That's what we're looking for. Very much representative of him as well. He does like to play on the front foot, impose himself on the opposition. So that's on aggressive interceptions. And then his defensive position is cover wing. His position of freedom is stick to position. He's not going to roam from that kind of area and zone too much. Slightly different with Frankie de Jong. He's still on cut passing lanes and stay back while attacking, uh, as was De Rhone. This time his interceptions are on normal. What we have in de Jong is obviously more of that deeper playmaker. That kind of one who's going to keep things ticking and integrate kind of patterns of play from deeper areas. So how do we replicate that? We have deep line playmaker in the positioning freedom. His defensive position is also on cover wing. Up to the attacking midfielder, we've gone with Berghaus in this case because of a long-standing liking for him from me. Anyone who watched my Ajax livestream series will know I've got a bit of a thing for Steven Berghaus after his wonderful performances in that. His defensive support is come back on defence to make sure he's tracking back. He'll also get into the box of the cross as we've spoken about in the tactics as well his position freedom is on drift wide as we just alluded to he will come out left often looking to support the likes of the pie but he'll also come out to the right and help support dumfries as well we're trying to get him into those wide areas as much as we can because we don't want to leave the wing backs too isolated with the two frontmen then starting off with memphis to uh, we've got him on drift wide as we've just spoken about no need to go over that there and his attacking runs are mixed He's not always looking to run in behind. Sometimes he comes short, he drops off, looks for a runner in beyond him, whether it be Gakpo or Berghaus or even Daily Blind on occasion. So he's not always looking to kind of utilise that movement and penetrate the back line. He likes to kind of get on the ball and drive forward. And then his defensive support is also on comeback on defence to get him tracking back. Finally, we've got a Gakpo in the other striker position. He is still on drift wide. He'll look to come and support those wing backs in the wide areas as well. But this time his attacking runs are getting behind. He's more likely to kind of look to penetrate in behind the back line whilst Depay is someone who will drift around and look to pick up the ball from slightly deeper positions. His defence support is also stay forward. He would act more as that out ball who they can get the ball into and then get kind of players in and around him. 
Um, so with regards to defense support, he's on stay forward. So with that being said, we're just about ready to round it off. If you've got any questions about the tactic, please don't hesitate to let me know. If you want to see how it ranks compared to all of the other systems, make sure to check out my tactics package on my Patreon. A great way to support the channel if you can afford it. And a thank you to my wonderful patrons as well. Before we go into some gameplay, I just want to say go and check out my gaming podcast, the video games podcast. The links are all down below. Got some great episodes on there, some of which we do cover the FIFA World Cup and give our thoughts and opinions on it. The FIFA World Cup DLC, I should say, for FIFA 23. Uh, not very positive, I'll be honest. Got other episodes as well covering the likes of Saints Row and what happened to that franchise. So go and check it out. All the links are down below. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload and drop a like if you've enjoyed it and want to see more. With that being said, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And until the next one. I will see you soon.